Okay, welcome to Vanholtz Developer Diaries number 16. Um, for this session, we're gonna go over a couple things. Uh, one is a new option for your Nitro App Builder um, data sources, which is BVN Virtual. Um, this gives you a way to replace uh, parts of your statement so let's say you have a where clause in a uh, temp table, you could filter that down. So we'll go over that. And also consuming a web service that will drive, let's say a grid. So a web service um, is your data source. And then in Nitro App Builder, you can view the, the items in that list that's returned back from that outside service. So we'll go over those two items today. So let me just log in. This is, uh, I'm in uh, Valence uh, version six. It's currently in beta and I, the hope is by the end of this month, it'll be out of beta. Okay, I'm gonna start with the launching app builder and let's create our data source. So the first one I'm gonna go over is the VVN virtual. So I'm just gonna plop this statement in. So for example, I'm just gonna save this and we'll create a grid off of it right away and we'll, we'll talk through this, but we have our temp table, which is going after a file that's on our, um, when you install valence demo CMAST and uh, just asking for some columns off of it. So customer information. So I'm gonna go and say temp customers. Okay, <clears throat> let's just create a widget off that, which will be a grid and we'll select, uh, we'll just select all. Okay, this looks normal if you've seen this before. Um, however, if we go to filters, you're gonna notice that, well, the only columns that you can filter down by are the columns that that temp table is returning. So the customer number, the name, the state, the city, and the country. Um, prior to this VVN virtual, this is the only items you could, you could add as a user filter. Okay. Um, so I could say state and, you know, we could filter down by that state, but it's still over the actual statement. So <clears throat> I'm just going to save this. Okay, so let's say we want to go back to this and say, well, I want to be able to filter this temp table for columns that I'm not, I might not be returning. Okay. So for example, let's say we want to filter uh, country. And we are passing in country. Uh, we'll just put it in, country. Well, I'll do state here anyways, just for demo purposes. So where, and then C state is equal to, and then for this Vivian virtual, we have a way for you to, if you, it's not documenting yet, we're working on the documentation. If you right click, it's gonna bring up a prompt so that if you don't know the syntax, for the VVM virtual. So the first thing is, what do you want to name this field? So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna call it uh, V state. And does it have a default value? We're not gonna have it have a default value. This would be as if you could set a default value. So when the initial run of the, the data source happens, it will apply that value. And then let's say that's your default value, but then if a user filters down your widget, you, it would overwrite that current value. Um, you could go in a different way and say, I won't put a default value here, but I could add the filter and then put a default value there on the widget filter too. So this is a character field. We do need to know the type of field this is because we, we don't, this is a virtual field. So you're, you're kind of creating on the fly. Um, character length of two, I'm gonna create it. So now you see the syntax. So it's Vivian virtual, your column name that you're creating could be whatever you like. Um, the default value, so I didn't put one, so it's null. The type of field, and that's why it's kind of helpful with the 
right click because we need another field. And then the length of field, <clears throat> length of the field. Okay, let's go here. So now this is a good example. So it failed because I didn't put a default value. So let me put a default value in there. Okay, so now it's, it's, it's defaulted to Illinois. So if we look at the statement, you still just see it as Vivian virtual, but what happened on the fly is that when it ran it, this gets replaced with the current default value, okay? So let me just save this. Let me go into customers. Filters, I'm gonna remove this one. But now we see this new filter, it's the, our virtual column, <clears throat> which will then be applied to our temp table where clause. So here I'm gonna say, yep, I wanna apply this and let's just configure V state. Um, let's change it to CA. So now that was applied and we can see it was correct. So I'm just gonna save that. Let's go over this one more time. I'm gonna create an app with it. <laughs> And since I didn't really pick the right, let me take this out. I want C state to gone. Okay. So I'm gonna go back to this data source. I'm gonna drop C state to show a true. Okay, so the, the temp table is not returning C state, but we're still gonna be able to filter by that state. Let me go back to here, launch our quick app. So the default value is Illinois. I'm gonna change it to CA and now it's California. And again, this is being applied within our temp table in our data source where before you could never on the fly, apply filters to a temp table, it always apply to the main statement. So this was requested uh, many times. So yeah, this is a new feature in Valence 6. And if there's no questions, I'm gonna move on to the web service. And there's no questions, okay. All right. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a data source that's consuming an outside web service, that web service is returning JSON, and then use that to display the data in Nitro App Builder with a grid. And I already have a statement prepared. Grab it, we'll go over it. Okay. So select statement, doing some stuff with our return columns. However, we're using JSON underscore table, which is in DB2. And I believe, I could be wrong, I think it's V7 R3 and above. Um, I know that I'm running, we're running on 7 R3 right now. And so what we're saying is, this will take in a JSON value. You could have had a hard-coded variable that's just JSON and then return it out for our statement and we define what columns that we want out of it. It could be all the columns, but you still need to define those columns and what type of columns they are. So I'm just gonna take this URL and that's all it is. So this is not, it's an outside service. So we see that it's returning. This one's returning actually an array of bre uh, breweries, which is each array is an object, a JSON object. So since JSON table needs JSON, an array is not truly JSON. So we need to add 
some syntax here. So we're adding the curly bracket. We're defining what that array is. We just called it root for the data source itself. And then we can concatenate that end curly bracket. So in reality, we would see, let me go back to this. So it would be curly bracket root. The value for root is this array and then end curly bracket, okay? Once we've defined our source, we're using get clob, HTTP get clob, which you can define the actual URL that you're gonna be pulling in. And then now here we're defining our columns. We need to, there's some syntax and you can look this up on, on, on your own time. Um, you have to define, okay, well, where's my root that I'm gonna be pulling from for these columns? So I'm just defining, yep, it's root and it's an array. So that's the syntax. And I know it's root because I hard coded root here. Now, if this web service already returned a true JSON object that already had root in there or whatever it called it and the array of items, then you wouldn't have to do this, this concatenating. And we know that, I'm gonna take this. We can see it cleaner. So each item that's returned has an ID. So we're pulling in that ID. It has a name, a brewery type, name, brewery type. So we're just pulling in all these values, okay? Fairly straightforward, we're just saying once we're set in what location, which is a root and it's an array, we're just saying property, ID, and then this is our column name that's being, that we'll, we'll have access to. So we call it ID the type of column, same thing here, name. These could have, this could have been name X. You know, it's, it's whatever you wanna call it. Let's go to preview. And here we go. So now this data source has the data that is being responded from this. So the first item on that list is Avondale Brewery, ID of two, Avondale Brewery, ID of two. So let's just save this. And we'll create a grid off of it to see the data. Okay, we'll just put the name, um, I think I did some formatting for the full address. Sure. Street. Name type. Okay. Not sure why I'm not getting data here. <laughs> Live on the demo box. Here we go. Okay, it was just a timing thing. It's taking a bit. Okay. So we're seeing those list of items. <clears throat> I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna take paging off. No paging. Uh, search. I'm gonna leave. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna, not gonna put any options on this just yet. We, we're, we're gonna come back and follow through and then follow up with uh, using Vivian Virtual to adjust this a bit too. So let me just say brew list. And let's just create the app really quick. Okay, so here's our new app. And it's listing that information from an outside service, which is not on our IBMI. <clears throat> However, let's take this a little further. Let's say that I know that this service has URL params that I can do some sort of filtering. Um, I'm going to use Vivian Virtual for that. So this is another way to use it outside of applying on your temp table where clause. I'm gonna go back to App Builder. Let's go back to Brew. Okay, I'm just gonna. 
Okay, so everything is the same. However, the only difference is I know this service takes in a URL perma by state, by underscore state, and we're just doing a concatenate and replace, and I know it needs to be lowercase for this web service. And then I'm saying Vivian virtual state Illinois, okay? So now let's go back to this. Let's see what we get. So now we're just seeing those breweries in that state. And that's because I put a default value of Illinois. However, we could then add a filter that would allow us to um, change that on the fly for the user so they can search for different, different ones. So let's go back into the grid and filters. And now we see state, okay? So I'm just gonna change this to state. Okay, now I need to know what do they have for New York. Okay, so now I'm seeing breweries in New York. So what that did was, I'm just gonna save this. Again, I just wanna go over what it's doing. So the user typed in that, we applied the filter, and then behind the scenes, it's now replacing that Vivian virtual with whatever was entered, so New York. However, really, it's just putting it in this string. So if I took this, paste it in and said, New York, I see all items from New York. So that's what it's really doing behind the scenes. So if I go and change that. So again, we're still constructing a URL. However, we're just concatenating whatever we're pulling in for Vivian virtual. By default, we're saying Illinois, Illinois. Um, however, on the fly, when the widget is running and the user decides to filter by it, New York, it's replacing that with the value of New York. Okay. Uh, we have one question. How does it work if the web service requires user and password? Uh, it matters. I mean, if it's oh, like it matters the uh, some that, that that sorry, that's the question. How does that work if the web service requires a username and password? Well, if it's a username and password that you can hard code in your data source, perfect. Um, if it's some type of like OAuth, you I, I I don't think you'd be able to do that here. I mean, it, it all depends on the web service itself. So again, let's run that app, brew, remote frame. So we're seeing Illinois, and then I'm gonna do New York. And now we're just seeing those different breweries. And you can do all the same things you'd be able to do with your normal data sources, <clears throat> even though this is a web service one, um, this widget can download the, um, the results to a spreadsheet, PDF, on a click event, go and filter another widget with the values from that row. So th that all just stays the same. So really the big difference here is that before this, we, would, um, we weren't able to pull in outside data from outside web services. And I know that customers have asked for that. They might have internal um, HR databases and uh, and so on that they wanted to pull in and do some type of reporting, but we just didn't have that ability directly within the, the front end UI. So that's it. Yeah. So we had two things. So the web services for data sources, pulling in uh, outside data for your apps, and then also using Vivian virtual to filter down a temp table that's within a, your with clause in your data source. All right, that's a short and sweet one today. Uh, that was it for those two items, unless there's any questions outside of the last one. Uh, I think maybe, I'm not sure. No, oh, thank you, Paul. 
Um, so yeah, if anyone has any um, questions after this, feel free to uh, email us at support at cnxcorp.com. Um, we'll post the updated uh, recording of this on our YouTube channel and we'll have an update to our calendar for next week. Uh, theory, how, uh, how can you access a database on a remote iSeries? Um, you could do that if, so the question was in the chat, sorry, you can't probably see that. Um, how do you access the database on a remote IBMI? Um, well, you could expose, um, there's a couple ways. I think right now um, you could do a remote DB on a data source. Let me just close these windows. Oh, I thought it was. So instead of going to the SQL way, I can go and just to the wizard way and choose a remote database. And then you could set up a link to your, your other IBM I and that should, that would work. And then you could just do, you know, your standard, here's my file, etc. cetera. Um, if you didn't want to use that remote, the remote database way and you said, no, I'd, I'd want to do it, what you just demoed, you know, using like almost a web service. Well, if you had valence installed on that other IBM I, you could expose a web service. So I'm going to go to portal admin. So in administration, there's web services. You could create a web service calling your, your program that then exposes whatever data it needs. And then of course that's on the, that's on the other IBM I. And then this environment, this other, the, the first IBM I, let's say IBM I A wants to get data from IBM I B through this route. Um, IBM I B would create the web service, expose it to your URL, my, you know, my stuff. And then you'd create your data source calling that URL. But again, you could also use the remote database that's already part of App Builder for your um, IBM I or your other IBM I. Hopefully that made some sense, Theory. Um, okay, yeah. All right, well, if there's no other questions, Thanks for joining. And again, we'll have this recording up on our YouTube channel. We'll have an update to our calendar for next Friday's de uh, developer diary session. And if anyone has any requests on content, please feel free to email us at support at cnxcorp.com. So thanks everyone. Have a good weekend.